change the story at the same time, so bear with me. So, uh, thank you very much for the invitation to be here. It's been a while since I, I've been with you. It was on the Holiday Inn last time, but uh, I do appreciate the invitation. Ed asked me to talk about a couple different things going on in the city, and I have, I think it's 27 or 28 bullet points. So you're, <laughs> you're here all set for the time, right? And we'll go from there. I will be glad to ask, answer all your questions, whether you want to do it when I'm on a topic or at the very end. Whatever works for you is, is fine with me. So thank you once again for being here, asking me to be here. <laughs> and it is a different election day not going to the polls or talking with folks. And what really affects me or bothers me the most, I can't shake hands with people. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's almost like a, a, a second nature just to shake hands and how you doing. And also with the mask, I have to wait for someone to talk, if I can hear them, to try and identify who the heck I'm talking to before I say something that's uh, not quite appropriate for the conversation. So just bear with me. Uh, COVID, there's, there's no story bigger, I think, in our community, including elections, national, state, local elections, but COVID, it affects every one of us in many similar ways and many dissimilar ways. Uh, my wife and I have four grandchildren, two of them, the oldest two are in Marcellus with our daughter and son-in-law. Their school schedule is, is right off the wall, it's hard to, it's hard to keep up, they're, they're like between fifth grade and seventh and eighth grade. So I was over there this morning putting the youngest one, taking him to school, his mom works part time teaching at the school and uh, their father is a sergeant in the Selway Police Department. So they go to school a couple of days, they're home a day and then they go a couple of days, I, I can't keep track of it, even with my, my, my iPhone, I try to punch it in and I might better just Sit, wait for somebody y'all and say, hi, you're supposed to be here. Our other two grandchildren, our son and daughter, all live in Senate and they go to Wheat Sport. Not go over to podium here, they'll be great. Uh, the one, youngest one, she is our only granddaughter. She's in, in uh, kindergarten, so she couldn't wait to go to school. I'll bet Wheat Sport can't wait for her to graduate either. I can, I can just see it in her eyes. And her brother is in uh, second grade. And next week, I, I don't understand this, they've been on a staggered schedule, but next week they go back full time, five days a week. So uh, between our, our daughter-in-law, our son, and my wife, they always have transportation back and forth to school. And uh, I guess that's what uh, grandparents are supposed to do, is take care of your family. Speaking of that, I've told all of you many times my dad came from one of 15 children. I am one of 75 grandchildren. And my children, the number is about 150 of those, the great grandchildren. So it was a tight knit family. We love to be together, we love to fight together, and then we love to make up together. So it, it always involves some beer or liquor or something. So it's a great family. But COVID has really affected city business. Only within the past month, month and a half, City Hall is somewhat limited access, or if you want to, uh, if you have to pay your taxes, or if you need a birth certificate or whatever, you have to go through security, I want to call it for lack of better words, where you sign in, you fill out the affidavit that you're not sick, your phone number, your contact. In case something happens, we have to be able, as everyone else is, is to trace back and tell you this is a possibility or we're concerned about you. Uh, myself, all the employees uh, in City Hall, we all have to go in through the boiler room where we have to sign in and fill out, you know, answer a, a, a questionnaire, whether you're sick or you've been exposed or whatever, and then your time in and time out. If you if is a, is a non-employee come in, we have to go to the back door. They will let you in. They will call the office that you're going to, that you're there, but we need to have the information on you, uh, not to be personal, but in case something goes wrong one way or the other, we have a way of tracking it. That, that's a regulation from the state. Uh, our council meetings are different. Uh, we always live stream our council meetings and we're getting a little better at it. Uh, we're non-employees, non-council members are allowed into 
to City Hall for council meetings, with the exception of last week, we had a joint meeting between the town of Owasco and the city of Auburn in regards to water quality and watershed rules. So that was live stream, and it was even so sophisticated if you were home, you could call in from home on your, on your iPhone, your laptop, or whatever, and ask a question and get an answer then and there. So uh, technology has come a long way, and uh, myself and many others are still trying to catch up, but we're trying our best to, to do what we have to do. Uh, it was stated this is an election day, and it is different not being at the polls, not shaking hands once again. Uh, I just encourage everyone, if you haven't voted, please get out and vote. My wife and I had, uh, we voted last summer, basically. We, we filed, they have a, a, a ballot, absentee ballot. We turned it in right at the Board of Elections. I'm very comfortable, it'll be registered. The election's getting to me, though, as much as I love it. It was a joke a couple of years ago when the election was over, Someone said they can't wait for to see Billy Fusillo back on TV again. About two weeks of that, we'll be ready to go back to the election. So. But I just encourage yourself and please encourage your friends and your family, if they haven't voted, regardless who you vote for, please get out and vote and, and, and distress it. It's important for all of us, no matter how the election turns out. Baseball. Ed told me not to talk about that because he didn't care about baseball. <laughs> Actually, I do. <laughs> uh, I, I guess the best way to describe baseball is, is, is we're neither fish nor fowl. Uh, we're trying our very best through Major League Baseball. My arm's stiff. So not that I'm a baseball. Uh, we're doing our best. We want to bring, keep baseball in honor. The issue was kind of, it was almost a, 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 a relief that we had to take a time out to find out what's going on with Major League Baseball, the NYP League, and so forth and so on. Personally, I, I've had a few phone calls, and I'm, I'm somewhat confident that we will have baseball back in Auburn next year. It may not be the same as we know the NYP League. What they're talking about is a uh, wood bat league. Baseball fans, does that sound right, wood bat league? It is. It's the college league. College, league. college players. And that's what we're trying trying to uh, uh, get an understanding from minor league baseball and with our uh, with our team officials and so forth and so on. We're trying. Uh, Major league baseball knows they're missing something. We know in Auburn we're missing something. So we're trying our very best. We will we'll fill in with the information as soon as we come up with whatever is concrete. You know, we can tell you a great story and in that two weeks we tell you another great story. About the third time, you're not gonna believe anything we say. So we wanna be accurate. We're not the only city in this situation. We're all here together. What's interesting is the NYP League, if you were to sell your team, for example, the city of Auburn was to sell the team, we had to, we had to sell it for a million dollars plus. That was that was a league rule for any team. Uh, Batavia was sold. I don't know. They, they it was basically it wasn't sold. It was absorbed by the all, all the other clubs. But if Major League Baseball, in my mind, wants to say no more baseball in Auburn, New York, are they going to come up with a million dollars? <laughs> you know, it, it, was, it was their rule. So I, I I'm not optimistic about that. But it's a question. Uh, the DRI, I want to speak about that very briefly, but part of the DRI is the public safety building. For any of you who have gone by the corner of Nelson and Seminary in the last few weeks, that's the site of the new uh, public safety building. I see today they were pouring walls and the old grocery store that was a, an anchor to the plaza, the east wall is gone. So that'll be rebuilt. The plans right now are to complete as much of it as it can, including a roof, a brand new, brand new roof on the old grocery store so they can work all winter. That will be basically the administrative end in the living quarters for the firefighters, offices, and so forth. So that's their hope, to save some money, they can close that and work for the there. 
Uh, PSP was part of DRI. The DRI is ongoing. I see uh, uh, Nick's ride has started uh, work in the old Holy Family Convent uh, across from the Holiday Inn behind Holy Family Church. So they're working in earnest on that. Uh, there's been a holdup to a bit. It's not the RI related, but the Shines Theater. Uh, it, people have to understand the city of Auburn does not own the Shines Theater. We have no part of it. We have never owned it. So there's, there's some quibbling going back and forth between the contractor and the state, and I'm sure that it will be resolved. The state has made all these promises in regards to helping uh, builders, uh, contractors, things of that nature for, for different grants. Well, the state took a big hit, as we all did, you know, with, our, with our taxes, so forth, and so on. And so, and we have balancing the act, uh, good for them. And I'm glad we don't have a part of how we're going to pay everything in the city of Auburn. We still worry about the city of Auburn, our aid to distressed cities, whether that's going to be coming through this year or whatever the case may be, and, and what's down the road. So. And with that, that's my uh, I, I'd love to answer questions. That's what I'm really good at. I'll, I'll kick it off. You hear about all, all these cities in fiscal, tr in fiscal trouble. Can you share with us how Auburn is with its finances especially going through 20, uh, 2020. Uh, our, our city manager, Mr. Diger, Jeff Diger, I've known for many years, uh, at budget time, our budget, we have our budget placed by July 1st. Uh, city council, myself, and Jeff, and our financial department, departments all work together to build a cushion in into our city budget. We held off on buying certain things, hiring new people, whatever the case may be. We have a very small nest egg, but we're all comfortable at this point that we're going to be able to meet our goals. We may not get a new truck or a new car or whatever the case may be, but we're very comfortable where Mr. Diger and the staff have put us financially. I, I can't give you facts and figures as to numbers because they change continuously. Our sales tax returns have been going up. Believe it or not, as one of our council members said, the best thing we ever did, the governor ever did, was when you order on Amazon, sales tax goes back to the community that you're from. So who hasn't seen an Amazon delivery in your neighborhood, at least one a day, or UPS or whatever, I think they stop at my house for coffee. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 myself and staff, we're, we're, we're reasonably comfortable right now. I can't project, none of us can project how long this is going to be, COVID is going to impact us. But right now we're in good shape. We haven't had to lay off anyone. Uh, we're still picking up our, our trash. Our firefighters, fire department still working. Uh, the police department, as many of you read the paper last night, they, they took a big hit with exposure to COVID. But I, I want to downplay it, but that's a job hazard that these police officers, men and women in the police department, face every day. You know, they, it's a strenuous. It can be a strenuous uh, situation when you call to someone's home you know, with the COVID and everything. Things many times get out of hand, but uh, hopefully they'll all pull through it. Uh, my son, as I said, is a police sergeant. Salve, he had four people in his department out at one point. That's, that's, that's just like having seven or 15 out here in the city of Boston. Can you get help from the state police or the sheriff to help the guys out? We, we, we have a, a working relationship with the state police and the sheriff's department, but they will not commit and backfill on, on the line. They have their own uh, duties, their own beats, their own areas of patrol, but they're always just a radio call away. Uh, you know, an old, I'm an old firefighter, and I listen to the scanner when I get the earbud in so my wife doesn't punch me. But I listen to police calls, and the state police, sheriffs, they're, they're, they're in the city quite often, as well as the city police officers going out to help them. So it's a, it's a good working relationship. I, I don't have a question, I just have a comment. This morning I got out of the house early, unusual for me, and 
know, I took a ride, and I was very pleased. I hadn't been through um, the technology park in a lot since I retired, actually, in 2016. I was thrilled to see the employee parking lot almost full. I didn't go back there, but, you know, I would work there for, well, for the company, 42 years. We were there for 22. And then the office parking lot was almost full. And that's really, that's really good. That's excellent. It, it's terrific. Yeah, it's absolutely. Terrific. Uh, within the last year or so, Tessie Plastics moved in, mm -hmm. moved in, and uh, their employment is growing and growing and growing. Uh, the rumor is they're working on some part of a testing apparatus mm -hmm. for COVID. I, I, I don't know that for a fact. I'm just telling you what I hear on the street. But they're going great guns with that. So we're we're we're, we're very very pleased when they moved into our area. But the whole technology park, uh, city planning has worked with the members of that organization to improve the looks of Technology Park, better lighting, better signage, different things too. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't need to look like an old factory site back in the 40s or the 50s or whatever. It just wanted, it's never gonna look like Hoops Park, but there is a trade on it. So, yeah, the climate has been good, so thank you. Thank you. Um. There's an interesting letter in today's Citizen addressed I knew, I knew to um, knew Mr. Bowers. <laughs> Mr. Bowers, who owns the Shine Theater, right. suggesting a plan for a win-win-win for Auburn, win for Theater Case, win for Auburn, where the birthplace of talking movies, we can be like Cooperstown is to baseball, we can be to the world for recognition of achievements in motion pictures and a win for Bowers development, that they can be spotlighted for their innovation and viability of the building, reconstruction and repurposing. Would you be so kind if there's someone that comes across as your path, if you could hand them or show them or share with them this plan? So I, I, I will give you my word, everyone here, if you send me an email or a, an old fashioned letter to my office, I will have it delivered, uh, not to the owner, but his attorney who I'm close friends with. Good. All right. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I give him. I can't guarantee anything other than yeah. the letter <laughs> will be forwarded directly to the to Mr. Bowers uh, through my contact. But other than that, I have no control. Fair enough. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Mike. Um, any word or any idea what may be happening with the old Bombardier? Uh, plant on, on Columbus and the Ontario. I, I, I'm smiling because that was, this is my 13th year as mayor. Right after being elected the first time, we started working with Bombardier. And we get so far up the hill, and they would change hands, change whatever, and we would back down. And then we would have someone come along and say, I'd be very interested in putting this or that in there, and we'd start again and we back down the hill. I'll, I'll tell you what my gut feeling is. I have no verification, nothing, no documents, never. I, I feel that there may be contaminated soil inside the building, which almost, you couldn't escape it. Right. Uh, you know, back in the day, that's the way it was. I'm, I believe in my mind that they're fearful if they sell it, to an individual or a corporation, or whatever, they are going to be held responsible for whatever may or may not be in, in the ground. So once again, I have no documentation, no knowledge, no secret handshakes or anything. It's just a gut feeling, and I feel I'm on solid ground. Two years ago, when uh, uh, Senator Schumer was reelected, I believe it was two years ago, we spent a month in earnest with his staff trying to come up with something. And we're going great guns, great guns. And then all at once, as always, uh, we talk with the folks in Montreal, whether that's their company, company home or whatever they don't know. But everything's going great guns, and then we get to a point, oh, we'll call you next week, we'll call you next week. So we've, we've had many people interested in it, interested in purchasing it, but we can never get them to go over the top of the hill. So it's not that we haven't tried. 
<laughs> we're, uh, I, I, I'd be glad anybody has any thoughts how we can we can uh, move this along or whatever. At the same time, I, I do want to say, up until probably with the last two to three months, they've been good neighbors. They've always paid their property taxes. They've kept their building up. They kept it respectable. Uh, we had an issue down there. They moved on it right away. They took care of it. But I can see now that graffiti starting to, to, crop, to crop up again on it. So we'll, we'll get back on it. But uh, there was there was three things that come to mind that people were ready to move in. They, they had a front. They had a, a, an operation. It was ideal. It was near the arterial, as we all know. It was near the rails, so it, it was really conducive to their business. But we just can't get them to move off the time. So. Do you have a personal vision for what the building that the police and fire department are in now is going to be? I was, I was, I was going to be saying something wise, like we'll name it the White Pearl Memorial Hall or something. <laughs> Is it big enough for that? Uh, not for my head, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, what, what I think is going to happen with it, the police department for many years has, has been strapped for space. So I believe uh, a portion of it will be, go back, will be assigned to the police department. They do not have what's called a sally port, where if you have someone under arrest, you can drive into the building, you can unload your prisoner, not worry about them escaping or, or whatever the case may be. So I think part of that may be a sale, in my mind, is a, a sale port. They also need more room for their uh, storage of uh, paperwork, so forth, and so on, and, and they just need more office space. Uh, when I was fire chief, Chief Gary Janata was the police chief. We have a morning, we didn't really have a lot going on, we have a cup of coffee decide how we're going to re rework the building so we could both gain from it. But I believe that's going to be a portion of it, and I would not be surprised if possibly the city court moves into a portion of the fire station, the old fire station on Street. Uh, probably the only one that remembers, three years ago, 1973, 74, city court, instead of being at the old <coughs> police office, that was actually in the police building. Not that I was there, but I was a young firefighter. <laughs> and if you work nights, you see who was going to be arrested, and in the morning you see who was getting bailed out after going to court. So, but I, I believe that's there's no intention on anyone's part to uh, demolish it, anything like that. It's a great building. It just cannot handle the weight of, of today's fire. So. I just have a question. Could you the old General Electric building yep. on West Tennessee, yep. is that within your boundary? No. And, and I was just no. wondering, is that the same? Is that beating a dead horse, or is there contamination unbelievable in the oh, yeah. facility? Yeah, that that there, was a, there was a great deal of remediation that went on, so I don't know where that stands. But that is uh, outside the city of Auburn. Just you know, everything to the west. Period. Basically, there is a road between McDonald's and Power X. Everything to the west is uh, really I believe it. So, mm -hmm. I'm old enough that wasn't around when I was a kid that was a circus lot when the circus would come to town that's where they were going and, they, and then they built the power I, I always found amazing that living in Auburn many of the folks from Auburn some some were relatives after getting done with power X they were sick serious cancer issues and everything. And in my mind, I, I, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, but I lay it back to what they may have been using or working with at GD at the time. Yeah. So I, can I prove that? No. Does it help? No, but it's just in my mind. So, But later on, it, it, showed, it showed up in the water table and everything else. Oh. But there was a great, a large remediation, and I want to believe it's close to, if not clean now. For the city budget, has, do you get much money from the state, and have they given you any kind of indication what they're, how much that's going to drop down because, um, the projected tax 
uh, it's called the uh, AIM funding. It, it, it's city, state aid to city, city, municipality, whatever. The governor for the longest time has wanted to cut it, and it's been frozen at our current level, probably six years now, something like that. Uh, myself and others who, uh, on the council, we have a feeling that the governor is going to cut it, but we have no documentation, no nothing in writing, whatever. So that's always interesting. It, it, it makes a big difference in our budget. And, and I can't quote you a figure, I don't want to give you the wrong figure, but we are concerned about that. When you think of New York State, with, if you're like me, you think only of, of upstate New York, because that's what's important to me. But if you think about New York City, with all the large companies there, the, the amount of taxes they are paying into New York, into New York State, but now with them closing down, shutting down, not paying their employees, is laying off employees or whatever, closing their big office buildings, that takes a huge hit on, on all of us. So I, I, I'm fearful of what they're going to do, but we have no idea yet what they're going to actually do. Thank you, and, and I always enjoy being here. I, I love the question and answer better because it keeps me on my toes. In case there is another election, I want to be able to inspire with my opponent. All right, thank, thank you, you everyone.